giant piece of ice floating in the water. My name is Alex Cornell and I'm going to talk quickly about the photos I took in Antarctica of the flipped iceberg. I'm going to talk about the gear used to shoot these pictures, a brief overview of the elements I used. Very simple setup but worth going over. Uh, I'm going to talk about the post-production process, what that looked like in Lightroom going from the very boring and dull raw images to what you see now. Not a lot of processing but I'm going to do a screencast show you what I did do. And then also talk briefly about the press outreach, uh, what it looks like on my end from an email perspective, from an analytics perspective, and basically how releasing a piece of content like this unfolds for me. I do want to mention, before somebody else does, uh, that these pictures are special only because of the remarkable subject matter. Uh, there was absolutely nothing I did on my end taking these pictures that is unique or remarkable. Uh, you could have pointed an iPad at these, which I'm sure some people did, and got some great pictures. Um, but it's worth going over the gear because Antarctica is a very strange place. It's a very fun place to shoot, but it's also kind of different than anywhere else. Uh, no shit, right? Uh, this is a picture of my normal setup. I wore a baklava and sunglasses, mostly for cold and sun protection. Uh, chest mounted GoPro. Hester snow gloves, which I found to be the best combination of both warmth and dexterity, and Arcteryx outerwear. Antarctica is cold, but the peninsula itself is relatively warm at an average of 2 degrees Celsius. The biggest problem actually is the unrelenting sun being reflected off just about every surface imaginable. Uh, so the sunglasses are extremely necessary and you have to get used to not being able to really review your images the same way that you're used to on dry land. So when we explore coves like these, we travel on Zodiac boats. These boats are super awesome. They're fast, bouncy, scary as hell if it's wavy. Um, and as such, I bring an old Canon 5D Mark II anytime we go out on the boat. Um, this camera has been with me for a long time. The memory card door barely shuts. Uh, I consider it a good backup camera and the one that was basically designated to be the Zodiac shooter just in case something went crazy. Uh, there was always a lot of splashing, rain, snow, just general chaos on these boats and it was worth having a camera that could shoot really great images but also if it fell in the water no one would have a funeral, it would probably have been okay, we would have moved on. Um, I alternated between two lenses, the 16-35 2.8 which I've talked about before in a previous video and then also the newly released 100-400 zoom. Um, Canon just put this out. I literally got it the day before I left. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more later in the video. Incredible lens. I was alternating between shooting video and images when we came upon the iceberg. Um, I haven't previously shared any video of the iceberg itself, so this is the first time I've done that. It pretty much looks like the photos, but it's still kind of oh, cool I to see. Never seen oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you so there's little water bubbles cool. inside the iceberg. So again, incredible sight, nothing special on my part or the part of the gear necessarily. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the uh, post-production process because a lot of what you see is a result of taking these images from RAW um, to their final form. So I'm going to jump into Lightroom here and do a quick screencast and talk about the image from 0 to 60. All right, welcome to Lightroom, my favorite program ever for managing photos and making edits and organizing the shots you get on a crazy trip like this one. Uh, so today I want to quickly go over the develop process for this image in particular. This is the raw image and that's the one I released online. I don't know if you can see the difference. There is one, I promise, uh, but there really isn't much going on in the way of editing for this image. Like I said, pretty lightweight edit, final and there's the raw. But I'm going to show how I basically take it from here to there right now. And then we're also going to dive into a different image, this one, which had a much more substantial edit going on. I'm going to show you a little bit of it. Oh, it looks crazy. We're going to come back to that. Um, but first, we're going to start with the uh, iceberg. Quickly, if you didn't know, G in Lightroom takes you to the grid view. So if you're here and you want to get back, hit G and you're right back to the grid view. Fast uh, shortcut. Good to know. So here we are in this image. Like I said, we're not going to do too much. First thing I do is look at the histogram. Uh, this is basically just to make sure I had a good exposure and that nothing is clipping or getting crunched. In this case, it looks pretty good. It looks actually really good. I might bring the exposure a little bit to the right. You know, I don't want to lose the sky, but I, you know, I just want to brighten the image up a little bit. Where I'm most concerned is the imp down here where I really dig the water and the kind of the detail here in the shadows. I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to keep an eye on that area as I go. And then also basically just the iceberg itself, make sure we're having the right amount of detail. So I might mess around with shadows a little bit just to see if I can get that detail in that shadowy area. I could do it with uh, 
with a specific area, but right now we're just gonna do it globally because why not, we're having fun. Um, you know, it doesn't really look like we need to touch the rest of this stuff too much. I'm basically trying to mimic this look. That's the final image, and then this is the one we're working on. So just a little bit more we need to do, nothing crazy. Clarity is going to be the breadwinner here. Uh, Clarity is a really, really cool button. You can really screw things up with it, but usually it works as long as you stay kind of minimal with it. Basically what it does, uh, I don't know what it actually does, but as far as I'm concerned, it enhances the, con or the uh, contrast, makes things a little sharper, and basically makes everything look cooler. This is basically my cool button. If you go all the way, it looks crazy and doesn't look real. Although those look really badass, it doesn't look real, so we're not gonna go there. If you go all the way off, it looks kind of fuzzy, like you're wearing glasses, wrong prescription or something. But if you hover right around like 30 or 40 for an image like this, it can look cool. Because, you know, we're basically concerned with enhancing these edges, making it look really nice and sharp and what it actually looked like in real life. Um, I will pop the saturation just a little. Uh, maybe like 22. This is unusual for me. I usually don't mess with that, but in this case, I really want to call out these blues and bring it back to kind of how it looked on the day. Since I'm shooting raw, saturation is a little bit duller. I also shoot with a neutral profile. Basically, if you want to make your image look as muddy and boring as possible out of the camera, that's a good way to do it. Uh, so the saturation is necessary just to bring it back a little bit. Uh, at this point, I will skip uh, the color toning stuff for now. I'm going to skip the split toning for now. Uh, get a tiny little bit of sharpness just for the hell of it. Um, I will enable profile correction because I had a wide lens and there's a little bit of distorting, a little bit of vignetting that happens with a wide lens like this. In my case, 16 to 35 is not in the menu. Forget why. Uh, it doesn't really matter for the sake of this video. But basically what it's doing, if you watch closely on the edges, it's taking care of the edge vignetting that happens with the raw image. Uh, and then in the middle, if there is any distortion happening here because of the lens, it will take care of that. In this case, it didn't really seem to make too much of a difference, but uh, it's a good thing to know if you are using a wide lens. I'm not going to touch vignette. Maybe in my past, in my younger days, I would have, make it more dramatic. In my case, though, I just want this image to look realistic. I don't really care about the stylistic stuff like grain or vignetting. For a similar reason, I'm not going to touch my visco filters, even though I have all of them and they look really nice over here. You know, a lot of this stuff is its just a little too heavy-handed for me. I used to love this kind of editing, like this kind of grainy, filmic look. I don't know, these days it's like I'm just not into it anymore. And so I rarely touch those anymore at all. So let's see, this is the image we're working on. That's our final. It looks like the final had a little bit darker area down here. I actually kind of dig this a little bit more, so we're going to stick with it. Uh, just to show you quickly, off, that's without edits, it's with edits, not a lot. Not a lot going on, but just a really simple correction to bring it back um, basically to looking real and what it looked like on the day. So that's a pretty light edit. Quickly, I'm going to show what a really, really heavy edit looked like. And in this case, this is a sunset we saw, a beautiful mountain, beautiful sunset. Uh, but oh my God, look at the original. So really, really crazy, different looking, and usually, like I said, not the kind of edit I like to do. But in this case, I felt like the original photo had a really weird white balance. I don't remember it looking that blue in real life. So what I did was really accentuate the colors in the sky by pulling the white balance basically all the way out uh, into the yellow area. You can see the final image, which is over here, had a significant white balance edit, a significant saturation edit. Look at that, 45. Clarity's at 65. We're going really crazy with this one. Uh, it's got the profile corrections engaged, even grains all the way up. This is a very unusual. Um, but I thought that, I just thought it looked cooler this way. Um, you know, here's the original again, and there is the final one. I wouldn't normally advocate for doing anything like this. This is really like crazy um, editing going on. But you know, for that one, I just thought it looked cooler, so I went for it. The icebergs edited very minimally, as I said. Um, you know, I think that these just kind of didn't need anything near as much work as an image like that. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it. Lightroom's awesome. Uh, uh, this is a very, very lightweight overview of what I did for the images, but hopefully you learned something. I'm going to send it back to myself. So as I mentioned, I quickly want to dip back into gear uh, before we move on. Talk quickly about lenses. As I said, the 1635 was the lens that took these pictures. It was definitely one of the most versatile, one of the best picks to go out Zodiac cruising with just because it is very flexible and has a really wide angle of view. Um, in addition to that, I brought the set, uh, 24 to 70 f4, and then also the 100 to 400 um, f4 to f5.6. 
Now this lens is awesome. It's a new release, 100-400 to I'll put the link below. And if you've ever used the 70-200 to f2.8, which I'm sure you have because it's everyone's favorite zoom, uh, it's exactly the same size and weight, almost exactly. Um, but it goes from 100 all the way to 400. So a little bit more throw, basically. 100-400 is, is great. And the, the coolest thing about this lens is if you've ever used their super like, uh, I think it's 28 to 300 lens, it's a little bit like a pump action zoom. It's kind of unwieldy and kind of heavy. This is a more standard Canon twist zoom, which is a lot easier to manage, a lot easier to use, um, and less heavy than the, the barrel zoom that you see on the 28 to 300. So I've talked about a couple bags on the program before. Uh, in Antarctica though, I brought something new. This is the Pro Tactic 452 from Low Pro. Uh, this is a new release and an incredible bag. It's really great, I love it. It's definitely my new favorite. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that it can house a DSLR with a battery pack or a big one like a 1DC or 1DX. So it's tall enough that you can fit a camera like that in here with lens attached and still have space for all your lenses, uh, another camera body if you need, and your laptop. So in terms of versatility, it's huge, literally. Um, and I think you know the, the interior allows you to pretty much organize it however you want. It's really flexible in that way, and it really makes for quick deployment, which I like quite a bit. Um, and then third, it's got this sneaky little rain cover hidden away on the underside that'll really quickly deploy, fit right over the bag super fast. So if you need to, it starts snowing, it starts raining, uh, or penguins are spitting at you, whatever's happening, you can very quickly protect this bag. And I really love that about it. All right, so I'm gonna talk super quickly about the release of this and how I manage uh, the release of content online. There is what you can do um, in terms of outreach and then there's kind of what you what happens to you. Uh, this was a really good mix of both for me. Um, I released the image to one blog. Uh, this is Colossal, incredible blog, and they posted the images, which they were the first ones to do so. And I was really lucky that they did. They have a huge audience, absolutely massive. Uh, you can see on the first day, January 15th, where my traffic just goes from uh, the typical about 90 people a day to 12,000 up to 14,000. And that was definitely because of this is colossal straight away. Uh, you can see that since this is a very typical viral uh, decline, basically the initial pop and then it just drops off after that. Right now, you know, we're about back to a few hundred a day. Uh, this is very normal, um, definitely not depressing at all, it's, that's just how it goes. Uh, it did survive two weekends though, which is actually pretty unusual. Usually the weekend just puts a nail in the coffin for a piece of content. This one came back uh, with traditional media. Blogs don't like posting old content, but luckily traditional media doesn't care. I don't know what the deal is with blogs. If it's like an hour old, they don't post it, it's ridiculous. But um, it's had a pretty good life online. And what I like to do with this is, obviously it's cool to look at the numbers, but the most important thing for me is to watch the referrer graph. Um, and the reason for that is because this really helps me figure out which blogs I want to submit to in the future and which ones drive the most traffic, the most engagements, and monitoring this can be really helpful. Uh, so in this case, you see Colossal is just crushing everybody else, which is awesome, their name, uh, they live up to their name, followed by I Fucking Love Science, which is a great name also. Um, and then on down the list, you've got uh, Petapixel, Laughing Squid, Smithsonian, Weather Network did really well, Science Alert, Washington Post, uh, Weather.com, Reddit. Funny thing about Reddit is uh, with an image, I had a real problem with the image getting reposted by other people on Imgur. It made the front page of Reddit, I think, three times without me being attached to it, which is really annoying, but there's pretty much nothing you can do, especially with Reddit. Um, Mashable, Business Insider, you know, a lot of, a lot of really great blogs covered it. Uh, because it, at the end of the day, it's all about audience. You know, it's like, I think for me, as a musician, the goal is always audience, eyes on your work. And, you know, in this case, it's like I said, it's not my, the, anything by any means uh, a piece of work that I'm really that proud of because it doesn't really, it's not a good example of any skill on my part necessarily, but it's still really cool to have an audience this big, even if it is a picture of ice. Um, and you know, cause that's the goal. That's really why I think we do anything as artists. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy this video behind the scenes. As I said, I'm going to do a lot of these. Follow me on Twitter. I will announce them always there. And if you have suggestions, if there are things you want to hear about, uh, I like doing these high quality videos that I take a lot of time to make because I think 
you know, I get a lot of value out of that when I see other people do it, so I'm just trying to give back a little bit. And, you know, no bullshit unboxing or clickbait here. You know, hopefully these are all just useful and you like them. So my name is Alex. Goodbye.